The Lord be with you. Good morning. Welcome to worship, all of you. It's glad to, I'm glad to see you here for worship. And those of you who are joining us online for worship, welcome and good morning. Um, I've uh, got Jim back there greeting each of you. He's in person. It's good to see him here. Uh, Dave kind of set us up with a couple more um, sound things. So hopefully this week you'll be able to hear a little better. I know last week there was a little confusion about the sound. So let us know if you're having any problems with hearing the worship today. Also, if you have prayer requests, I'd like to ask you to go ahead and please share them with us, and Jim will pass them along. As I've been walking throughout the pews this morning before worship, collecting up the prayers, these are the folks that we've got for this morning. We have Carl Hellstrom, um, who I visited in the hospital, and um, he is doing, he's doing all right, but he would like us to keep him in his in our prayers. Uh, Lois and their, uh, their daughter Carol were also able to visit with him in the hospital, but this is kind of one of those times where they're trying to discern what's going on inside of Carl's body. Um, so yeah, please do keep Carl in your prayers. Um, Jimmy Rogers, who um, maybe you've met his sister-in-law Angie, who came to church a couple of times um, and sat on this side of the pews. Uh, some of you ladies know Angie. All right. So her brother-in-law, Jimmy, has had several strokes that have been kind of like spraying above his, into his brain from a heart valve that has some kind of an infection. So he was intubated for a while, and now that has been removed. He's a bit of a jokester. So um, <laughs> while I was visiting with him, um, I was asking questions and um, he wasn't really responding, and his son, Jim Jim, was like, Dad, can you hear, Pastor? And he goes, well, I'm not deaf. So <laughs> I guess maybe I was just peppering him with too many questions. But uh, he, he did talk with me a little bit yeah, yesterday and seems to be faring better. He's been, the intubation has been removed. So we're going to keep Jimmy Rogers in our prayers. Kate McCullough was on a prayer chain list from the other parish that I visit on Sundays in Newville. Uh, her name is Kate, and she's now cancer-free, so we're giving thanks to God for Kate McCullough. Eric was lifted up for COVID, and I know that it's been kind of rolling around again, um, so please do be careful and take good care of yourselves. Marlene has back pain, and so we're going to keep her in our prayers. My sister-in-law, Meredith, has a dad who is it's her um, stepdad, but the dad that she's known. He's, he's been moved into hospice, and it's really kind of weighing heavily on her. And some of you who know about this, we're talking about that with um, Marty and Paul. Um, so we want to keep folks in our prayer as they go into hospice. We've been asked to remember folks in Kentucky. You know, it's been going on in our nation with the flooding and the fires, so we'll keep them in our prayers. And of course, we'll keep uh, your sister Peggy in our prayers, Helen, and you, because we love you, and we know that you've been facing a lot of challenges lately, so we're going to keep you in our prayers as well. And good news uh, from, from Betty back there, her sister June is out of the hospital. So very good news there. I see you, Jenny. I'm coming over there to get you. Oh, yes, we will keep your mom and your sister in our prayers always. Are there other um, prayer requests that we have missed? Yes, Anita? Pam, and what's the other name? And Debbie. Is Debbie going into hospice? Okay. You got it. I'll tell you that hospice is a wonderful gift. It really does give the family a lot of support um, through the challenges. Yeah. Oh, you're giving me a thumbs up for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Today is um, the first Sunday of the month, as you know, and on the first Sunday of the month, this parish has agreed to do in, um, communion at the altar around the communion rail. If you are unable to come forward for that, please do not worry. We will come back out and bring communion to you. I do have a lector, thanks to Bob, 
um, and Grace Ann has uh, volunteered to help me up at the altar for communion. So I think we're set for the things that we need in the church for the worship. Are there any other announcements that the community needs to be made aware of? No? Okay. Well then, let us begin our worship as we stand together, calling upon God's name and making the sign of the cross upon ourselves. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. We'll take a moment to to be seated or stand or kneel, however we're most comfortable, as we lay before God and confess our sin, those things that are heaviest upon our hearts in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear this good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We'll stand and sing God who stretched the spangled heavens. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the hearing of the word.
The first reading is from Genesis, the 15th chapter. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave for my house is to be my heir. But the Lord, word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look towards the heavens and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. We read together from Psalm 33. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by the side of, size of his army, nor are warriors rescued by their great strength. The horse gives vain home hope for victory. Despite its great strength, it cannot save. Truly your eye is upon those who fear you, O Lord, upon those who wait for your steadfast love to deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive in time of famine. Our innermost being waits for you, O Lord, our helper and our shield. Surely our heart rejoices in you, for in your holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, even as we place our hope in you. The second reading is from Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Now the faith, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of this same promise. For he looked forward to the city that his found, the foundations, whose architect and builder is God, by faith, he received power of, the, of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes home. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, I don't know if you guys get the midweek messenger, but Jim did a great little exposition in there um, about the breakdown of the parts. So I'm going to skip that part since you have that already. Thank you <laughs> kindly for that work that you do. Uh, and I really do want to say uh, a great deal of praise to Jim for all that work that he does on a weekly basis, right, for the community. We are very grateful. Uh, so I'm going to build on some of that information that you may have read, and even if you hadn't, it's okay. We got you covered. This week, any of you do Facebook? I know some of you are on Facebook or other platforms, social media platforms. If you go on there, it's really, it's kind of a neat place where you can connect with people from your past. Um, maybe you went to school with them or whatever. Uh, but this week on Facebook, I was reminded of a day eight years ago that changed my entire life forever. Um, I was really excited that morning. Um, the day was arriving for a friend of mine. He is a priest in the Roman Catholic Church, and he had been selected by his church body to be a bishop. That's a pretty big deal in the Roman Catholic Church, as you may know. Um, and in ours too, but this is not an election like where we go in and vote and select a bishop. Within their church body, in the Roman Catholic Church, it's the leadership that decides who's going to be next as a bishop. So he was really excited as part of the interfaith breakfast group that meets every Tuesday, and um, he let us know he was going to be ordained to bishop, and had made, they made out these really special um, invitations, and I got one in the mail from, from his church body. It was kind of like all that special seals like you would for a graduation from high school kind of thing. It was really beautiful, special, exciting. They had put together special seating at the front of St. Patrick's Cathedral in uh, Manhattan. I've never been to the building for a worship service like this. It's a really big deal. Um, and so we were going to get front row seats for his ordination. But that was not to happen. And I'll tell you why. Early in the morning, a young mom from my church called to say that her sister was in labor and delivery at the hospital and I needed to come straight away. I was really kind of in shock at that moment uh, because I knew that the pregnancy was very early and she had twins, but apparently her body just isn't gonna wait to let go of these, to keep the babies wanted to let go. It was a devastating day for the family. They were waiting in the waiting room and they witnessed joy-filled families coming through, right? As they're waiting in labor and delivery and families are all excited about the new arrivals of babies and they waited in dread as in a room nearby, their loved ones were unsure of what would happen. I said that it was a day that it changed my life forever because what I witnessed on that day was incredible. 
um, I've never given birth to babies <laughs> myself, but the birth of a child, any child, especially twins, is pretty powerful business. And they asked me to baptize the boys, and then they died. And then within the week, we had the funerals. Anybody who knows parents who go through something like this, these were young parents. Usually that divides. But these two stuck together like glue, mom and dad. And the family stuck together and supported them. The unquenchable anguish of that day and that week, even through the funeral, was a powerful sign to me of what love really is. These two parents and their family carried them through the worst event of their lives. Seeing this live out has changed me as a mom, as a wife, as a pastor. This week in Facebook was the eighth anniversary of the birthday of those babies. Every year, they have a birthday cake for those twins. They've had two healthy babies since then. Those children, their brother and sister, know that Kevin and Sean are their brothers, their older brothers, and they posted tributes of love, not only for the twins and the parents, but for one another. Like there was tributes of love even for me all over Facebook this past week regarding this situation. Now think about that how devastating it is to lose babies, and yet they've turned this into an opportunity to love on each other and to lift each other up and encourage one another. Jesus said to the crowd of thousands gathered around him, remember last week I told you there were so many that they were crushing each other as they were coming to listen to Jesus, and Jesus has talked to them about all the things that leaders do, and don't be deceived by that, but to trust in God. And then he says, don't be afraid, little flock. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This portion, portion of the text that we're hearing from today is from a longer passage about worry and faith. It's a powerful and beautiful speech to people who are living with plenty of things to be afraid of, including the loss of your children, or any kind of loss. Think of all of you who are mentioning hospice. The grief and the fear that comes from that. If you remember, we just heard Jesus telling one man who asked him to arbitrate between him and his brother that focusing your hope upon what you build up in material things will only bring you nothing but despair in the end. In fact, trying, trying to build up your material wealth is really foolish since you don't even know when you might die. So instead, focus your life upon the things that Jesus focused upon. The love of God and the love of what God loves. This creation and those who inhabit it. Care for them as you would want God to care for you. And you will see that God cares for the world through you and will create a space for an abundance of good things. Imagine that you were me on that day eight years ago, all full of hope to attend an event, to be an honored guest at that big event, and then hearing that you're needed somewhere else. Oh, what would you do? How would you feel? Have you ever been surprised by something that has changed your life? That day, as beautiful as it would have, would have been in the cathedral, was, no, was nothing. No offense to my dear friend and beloved <laughs> uh, bishop, but being with this family and witnessing intense love in the middle of the worst grief possible, changing my life forever. Jesus reminds the crowds gathered on that day that all of us today... Uh, and all of us today, that this is exactly how life plays out in God's kingdom. Jesus uses creative illustrations, like a master who may return from a wedding banquet, ready to share the banquet with his household. 
you know, that's what we talk about at the communion table, right? Jesus is like, just be ready because I'm ready to always provide for you all the food that you need to keep going. Sitting them down and serving them. Isn't that what Jesus did? Washing their feet and feeding? Or like a thief who comes in the middle of the night. Sounds like maybe we don't know when our lives and our barns and all the stuff in it might be just gone. So just be ready. That's God's kingdom. Jesus encourages them in those days and us not to be afraid, but to be alert and aware of God's movement among us. Living our lives the kingdom way means to care for others. Place our hope not in the systems of this world that are so broken or in the material wealth that we're told will keep us going until we're dead, but placing our hope in the one who really loves us. That will be the way we place our treasure in the right place. Our treasure being everything that we hope for is placed into God's hands. When you live this way, your heart's in the right place. Have you heard that phrase before? She has her heart in the right place? Yeah. It is when you set your hope in God's promises that you find rest for your weary souls that just want to wander around in the land of worry all the time? Where do you put your hope and your concerns? Into God's hands. What you cannot control, what you cannot fix, hand it over to Christ and trust that his love will carry it. God can and does care for all of us. Jesus proved this by coming down here, laying his own life on the line and by lifting up our lives as he lift up his, li his life from death, conquering death, and making a way for all of creation to be set free from worry and concern. This frees us to be generous with all that we have and all that we are. It frees us to love in the midst of the worst day ever when you lose your children. Megan and Brian, that's the parents of those twins, their love for one another has transformed me over these eight years. Witnessing their continued love for one another brings me incredible hope for the next generation coming up. May God bless this family and all who have lost children. May God bless you and all of us who long for God's kingdom to be the one where we live where there is hope, where there is healing, and good hearts. Let us pray. God, there are moments that surprise us, like a thief in the night. We're ready for something, and then the whole world shifts, and we move in a different direction. Help us to be nimble on our feet and in our hearts, Lord, to witness where you're calling us each day. Be with those who are facing loss or who have been facing loss and carry grief within them. Release us from the grief that we might also see your love in the midst of it. We thank you for families that witness this sort of love to us. Bless this community, Lord, as we go out from this place refreshed from the table and reminded that you are like the master who arrives home from a wedding banquet and says, come and eat, I'm going to take care of you. Sit down, you hard workers. I know that you've been putting everything together for me and my kingdom, and now I want to take care of you. I want to bind up your wounds. I want to feed you. We thank you for being that kind of master to us who loves us so much that you would give up everything that we might have life. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. As you're able, would you please stand with me as we sing Blessed Assurance, an old favorite.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Trusting in God's extraordinarily, extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. In places of fire and flood, provide healing and hope. Merciful God, here. Let your kind, kind, loving kindness be upon your world. Be our help, helper, helper and shield in places torn by strife and violence. Lord, there are so many places in our world that are facing this. We lift up those places that are upon our hearts and minds now. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. In our community today, we pray especially for Peggy Warmcastle, Anita Painter, Hannah, Greg Mitchell, Jay Swope, Karen Kaler, Woody Isher, Blossom Rank, Trudy Stum, Loey Parker, Steve Nock, Judy Hunt, Edsel, Debbie Aldridge, Joe Holden, Kathy Miller, Judy Holly, Jim Rogers, June Rafter, Fran Reese, Marty Pano, Kate McCullough, Car Carl Hellstrom, Eric and all those facing COVID, Marlene, Meredith and all those facing hospice, and uh, Meredith's dad, Marty and Paul Sheffer, Pe uh, Peggy and Helen, June, Jen's mom and her sister, and Pam and her mother Debbie, who's also going into hospice, and all those whom we name in our hearts now. Help us to trust your promise and not to be afraid. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember before you all who have died in faith and now rest in you. We lift before you those whom we miss today. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another.
Thank you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Speak to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, and make us one with you.
Please stand for the prayer after communion. Well, the blessing first. May God bless you and keep you into life everlasting. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal you've bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Thank you.